George's Day, 1957. A great day in the history of Hales Owen because it is the occasion of the visit of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II and His Royal Highness Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh. The Lord Lieutenant presents the Mayor and Lady Marys and the mayor then presents the town clerk, Mr. Basterfield. <laughs> Mr. Frank Summers sends his son, the vice chairman, and Mrs. Jack Summers. Mr. Walter Summers, Mr. Bennett, Mr. Chris Summers, Colonel Summers, and at this point Her Majesty remarks that there seem to be a lot of Summers. We are now in the dye plant, where dye plots are manufactured for most of the dock forges of Great Britain and many of the countries of the Commonwealth and of the world. Out of the furnace comes a piece of dye steel heated to forging temperature. It is placed on the anvil of the 1,200-ton press. This big manipulator, like a pair of giant sugar tongs, holds it while the press forges it and turns it again and again so that the steel will stand up to its heavy work in the dock forger's hammer. The prince shows the interest of a scientist. He has some very technical incentives and searching questions to ask. Apprentices working under Albert Butt, their instructor, are all in their first 12 months with the firm. The Queen, now accompanied by Mr. Dakin, comes into the heavy engineering shop where forgings are machined for the marine, electrical and heavy engineering industries. Prince Philip is very interested in this propeller shaft for a destroyer. Fred Montgomery has worked here for nearly 50 years. He must have machined the shafts of almost a quarter of the destroyers and frigates of the Royal Navy. the Queen is a great crankshaft for a Doxford diesel engine of a British tanker. These crankshafts are built up out of 20 or 30 large forgings. This crankshaft weighs nearly 120 tons. Mr. Dakin presents Ted Bates, the machine shop superintendent. He has supervised the making of nearly a hundred of these crankshafts. Another crank, another propeller shaft. This one is for a Whitby cast frigate. Its hollow board 
and the core, which has been japanned out, can be seen alongside it. We are now looking through the bore. The Queen moves up the white and gold staircase up to a platform where she and the Prince can watch the actual process of building up part of another crankshaft. One piece is heated up so that it can be shrunk onto the next. The tolerances are measured in thousandths of an inch. This team of Reg Coley, Joe Grove, Alf Clifton, Arthur Bradley and Percy Johnson, they know all the moves of this game. on to the heavy forge. The man and Mr. Bennett. Here are two big propeller shafts which have recently been forged. The forge manager is presented. The Queen stands behind a perspex screen to shield her from the intense heat which will be given off when this shaft comes out of the furnace and onto the press. It's a big drum shaft for the winding gear of a coal mine and is made from a 40-ton ingot. It's at a, at a temperature of about 1,200 degrees centigrade. their car, where another crowd excitedly await their first view of the royal couple. Mr. Frank Summers and asks him to convey her appreciation to all the members of the firm. She tells him that she could hardly believe that a forge could look so clean.
landed flying down the road which will henceforth be called the Queen's Drive. Through the crowds who will always proudly remember this great and wonderful day.